All right, let's run through some of the equipment that we just wrote about. This is some common equipment that we're going to use in class this year. We're going to start with the balance. What does the balance measure? Weight. Mass. mass. Slight difference there with weight. It's actually not measuring weight, it's measuring mass. We'll talk about that a little bit. Um, you want your little slider masses to be on zero to start. And where should this little pointer be? Middle. Right smack in the middle. If nothing's on it, it should be reading zero. Now, if it's not reading zero, there's a way to calibrate it. And there's a little screw on one side. Screw it or screw it back in to try to calibrate it. So before you ever mass anything, you need to make sure it's reading zero with nothing on that. Your bathroom scale at home might work like that where you can zero it out. But make sure it's point of zero. We're pretty close here. Um, and then let's say I want to mass something, like this rubber stopper. What side are you going to put it on? Very good. You're going to put it on the left slide because these are sort of your counterweights, your counter masses. And then you can slide them away from your object. So I always see people every year, you know, put it over here and you know, that's not going to work. It's got to be on the left side. This balance is nice because it would allow you to like compare and contrast. Obviously that's heavier. But always start by sliding uh, which one first? The larger mass or smaller one? Start with the biggest one first. And you know, keep moving it. If it's too heavy, back it up, back it up. And then you get to the point where you can move the smaller slider and just add them up and that would tell you your mass. All right, so that's our balance. There's also a triple beam balance that has three sliding masses. Um, we're going to use that one time for our measuring lab that you have put in your notebooks. And that will probably be the last time you see a balance like that. For everything else, we'll probably use an electronic balance, much easier to use. Anyway, we got a rubber stopper. A rubber stopper fits into what? Test Maybe the test tubes if we got a small enough one, yes. And also the Erlenmeyer flask. Nice and convenient because it's tapered and I can put a stopper in it. Erlenmeyer flask measures volume, as does what else? The beaker. The beaker measures volume as well. And what else? Graduated cylinder. This will be your best piece of equipment for measuring volume because it has so many extra divisions. You'll be the most precise with this. What else we got? Um, all right, we mentioned our beaker. We mentioned our test tube. Let's say I want to pick them up. What would I use to pick up the beaker? To pick up the beaker, I'm going to go with the test tube tongs? Yeah. Okay, let's see how that works. Definitely going to do that. Eh, okay, now that's a quick way to break a beaker. Please don't do that. Test tube tongs are for the test tube. They just squeeze on the test tube and then you can hold them back, pick up the test tube. The test tube lives in the test tube rack or the test tube stand. And if we're using our test tubes and we want to rinse them out and be done class to use, how are you going to leave these test tubes? Upside down the pegs. Okay. Beaker tongs would be to pick up the beaker, not the test tube. Okay. I see it every year. Please don't do that. Uh, which leaves us, I guess, with heating stuff. Let's say I want to heat up a beaker of water. What piece of equipment am I going to use to heat? All right, the Bunsen burner. And we also have hot plates too, which I didn't put out, but we might use the hot plates a few times this year. Bunsen burner, where is our Bunsen burner? Right here. All right, Bunsen burner has a little hose attached to it. This will hook into your gas uh, outlet on all around the room. How do you know if the gas is on or not? Uh, you, can hear it. you can hear it. The way the lever is right now is off. The lever needs to be pointed at the hose. So that's on, that's also off. And like this one, you can maybe even hear it coming out. 
So you always want to make sure that these are in the off position when you leave. We definitely don't want to be flammable. Well, that would be a bad idea. All right. If I want to light this Bunsen burner, though, um, what are some safety precautions I should be taking? Goggles. Goggles. I'm going to forego the gloves. I'm going to forego the apron. Good. Let's get rid of the ID tag. And we will usually just leave our ID tags on our desk before we even come in here. All right, so my ID tag's there. I want to heat up my beaker of water. I'm about to turn on my Bunsen burner. I've got to keep my beaker water supported above the flame, so I'm going to use my ring stand. Make sure that your ring stand is at an appropriate height. Wrong. Wrong. <laughs> like that. And if you, you know, if you realize as soon as you turn on your Bunsen burner that your flame is either way too high or way too low, then adjust your ring stand. Don't get it super hot and then try to grab it and say, oh, I need to lower it. No, be careful. I've seen someone burn themselves pretty badly by grabbing the ring stand like this with a bare hand. Make sure you don't do that. So that should be a good height, but we'll check it. What goes on top of the ring stand? The wire mesh or the wire gauze. It's got a little ceramic center that helps distribute the heat evenly to our glass beaker. Also prevents it from coming in direct contact with the flame, uh, which glass is not very good at changing temperature quickly, because what might happen when glass tries to change temperature quickly? It might shatter. So please be careful you never try to fill a hot beaker with cold water um, or even vice versa. So, yep. If it's a quick temperature change, it might shatter. Okay, so I've got my... i got everything set up. Will you actually hit the lights for me, Zach? Okay, so my gas is on. I'm going to use my striker, uh, which has got ooh, no flint left. Just a little bit. We had a little bit of fun with a striker. We're on limited flint. Don't waste the flint, please. You're just striking against this uh, rough piece of metal to make a spark. I might need to grab another one. We'll see if this works. But it's not just squeezing. It's also kind of pushing down. There we go. So I've got my Bunsen burner lit. You can even see the little inner blue flame that they were talking about in the safety video. Uh, that is the hottest part of the flame. So ideally, that's what we want um, in contact with whatever we're heating. OK, so then I would just move the base of the Bunsen burner underneath, like so. And that's how we would heat something up. If we wanted to uh, stir something that we were heating in here, maybe we're dissolving some sugar, something like that, use your stirring rod. This one has a little flat end. If we uh, wanted to put some powder in there, some powdered chemical, we'd use a scoopula. If we want to add drops of some other chemical, use a dropper. Important thing about the droppers, though, please keep the droppers in whatever chemical they came from. Don't cross-contaminate the droppers. And is that it? I think that is a little bit on all the equipment we were going to go over. Still not boiling. Questions, comments, concerns, statements? I smell burning. You smell burning? So now I'm going to take this down, turn off my gas, and we're done.